Uh, Alex, I'm, I'm, I find this bizarre. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my hardest to get my head round it and saying he'd go back, but I don't think he will. No, I'm very much in your camp, Al. Obviously, Manchester United won't comment officially on transfer speculation, but I think the, the key words in that article that you just read out, embarrassing U-turn. I think it would be embarrassing when you look at the, the handling of De Gea's departure or lack of at the end of last season. I think bringing De Gea back to the football club would not only completely undermine Eric Ten Hag because let's not beat around the bush. It was his decision to move on from De Gea and bring in Anana. But I think it would undermine Anana as well, who's had a difficult start to his Manchester United career. I think United fans are hoping that penalty save and it was a brilliant save at the end of the game the other night, will prove a turning point. So I just don't envisage a scenario where De Gea returns to Old Trafford. You're right, they've been caught off guard because, of course, he was sent home and Anna from the World Cup after a fallout with the Cameroon coach, Rigobert Song, but he has ended that exile. So it looks like he will be going off to the African Cup of Nations. Uh, but they've got Bayan Deer, a Turkish goalkeeper they signed in the summer. And the expectation, I think, is that he will fill in. I think he would be very disappointed if that didn't happen and De Gea was brought back. So I think this is a non-starter, to be honest. What about as a Manchester United fan and Portsmouth and Southampton? Um, would you have him back, Rocky? <laughs> that is brutal, Gabs. Uh, um, I'm not sure I would, to be honest. I mean, listen, obviously, there have been question marks over Anana when you look at the mistakes that he's made, particularly... Uh, in those first two Champions League games. But I don't think too many United supporters were complaining when De Gea left the club in the summer. Yes, he was a tremendous servant, but there were a lot of mistakes in his game last season as well. It felt like the time was right. Did they handle it well? Not at all. I think he should have been given the opportunity to say his farewells. Obviously, at one stage, it looked like a, a reduced terms contract was on the table. Then that was removed. So I think the handling was poor, mm. but I still think yeah. the overall decision was right. was right. And I think Anana hopefully will go on and prove himself to be a decent keeper. Of because let's remember, didn't start great for De Gea at no. Manchester United either. A lot of question marks about him early in his tenure. Okay, what about Harry Maguire? Um, are you willing to give an apology to Harry? Um, apology is a strong word. I, I phrased him on the, on the, on the, on the, on the Sunday session. Um, I think you've got to give constructive criticism where it's due. And I think at times he has been poor. You went hard on Manchester United. Okay. But, but if you look at the last few weeks, I think he's been excellent. And actually, it started with that Crystal Palace game in the League Cup. I think yeah. he was unlucky not to keep his place after that performance. I think he was man of the match against Sheffield United at the weekend. Another slugfest, really, in many ways for United. And yeah, he was brilliant. Say in sorry, Crookie. I was behind the goal. Say, so you want, you want I, Sancho I was, to say sorry? Come on, Crookie. Say sorry, man. I was... I was delighted for Maguire to get that, that goal and you can see what it meant for him. And, and I hope now that this is a turning point for him as well and he can go on and, and produce c consistently good performances. Say sorry, Crookie. <laughs> San you want Sancho to say need... sorry? Come on, Crookie. It's hard word to I say. Don't need... I don't need to apologise, oh, but I will say well boo. done on his recent performances. Alex, what about um, the, the sad news coming out of Goodison where um, the chairman passing... And now we, we read about the 12 points to, uh, uh, deduction mm -hmm. and it looks a real possibility. You know, if this is going to happen to Everton for the overspend, it's got to happen quickly. You, they can't wait and let it drag on and drag on and drag on and then there's no time to claw points back. Do you think, they, what is the latest? Will they get a 12-point de deduction? I think it's certainly one of the offers that has been discussed. Obviously, the Premier League are remaining quite tight-lipped about this. I've spoken to a couple of... Um, high up executives at other clubs and even they're not really being kept in the loop as to, to what exactly is happening but I do think there's a general feeling uh, around the other Premier League clubs that if Everton are proven to have breached these financial regulations then they do need to be come down hard on to really set an example for clubs who risk it in the future but it would be a massive blow wouldn't it because I think on, on a level playing field I think Sean Dyche probably would keep Everton up with relative ease this season if they deducted 12 points obviously it, it shoots them right down to the bottom of the table, certainly below Luton and, and uh, the likes of Bournemouth, that would be a massive problem, I think, for Everton. It's very difficult to make a case of them staying up with a 12-point deduction. And, and you feel for them in terms of the timing. Obviously, they've just lost Bill Kemright. There's mm -hmm. issues with the takeover, the new stadium at the moment. We mm -hmm. don't know when that will be completed. So very worrying times. But obviously, there's a lot of people suggesting that if Everton are subject to such a harsh penalty, then what happens to Manchester City with all of those Correct. charges? I'm not sure we're going to get a quick resolution because it, even if they are given this points deduction, Everton, they are found guilty. I think there'll be all kinds of uh, 
legal ramifications. I think they'll try and appeal it and it could still drag on for a long time to come. And also, there's the other issue with those clubs who've already been relegated from the Premier League at a time when Everton allegedly were, were breaking financial regulations. So is there is there subject of legal attention from those clubs who are no longer in the Premier League because they'll feel that actually Everton should have been deducted the points earlier and we might not have gone gone down. It's a real minefield for the Premier League. Alex, I've got to be really brief and quick with this because I'm getting daggers from the uh, producer. Uh, Tenali, uh, it looks like 10-month, um, we're talking about a 10-month ban now for the betting. Um, do you think Newcastle have got any chance of recouping some of the money from Italy because of this? Did they know? I'm not sure. I think it's very difficult to prove. Speaking to people in Italy, they're adamant that AC Milan weren't aware that this was going to happen. You can say they would say that, but I think it's going to be difficult for Newcastle to prove. This is a big blow, isn't it, for Newcastle in terms of their hopes of getting back in the Champions League and for Tonali as well, because there's a European Championships at the end of the season. If Italy were to qualify, and that is an if at the moment, he wouldn't be able to play in that either. So for, for whatever he's done, and it looks like he's been found guilty of betting on his own team, he is certainly going to reap the consequences. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.